Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Karen Valoria Miguel and I am owner and founder of Canada Bliss Hats and Accessories. And on my YouTube channel, I discuss everything related to career, business, and of course, handmade. Today's post is kind of a continuation from uh, my previous post on pricing. At the end of the video, I promised that I would provide a tool that I made, which is super simple and a very nice jumping off point for handmakers to figure out how much they should consider selling their um, handmade items for. So I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of a video of it and just how to fill in the, like, the cells because it is in Excel and or, or how to print out the spreadsheet and then just, you could do the calculations manually. But the first thing you need to do is have a list of all of the things that you use to make your item. And it should be a, a cost value um, per unit. So if you make a handmade pouch and it takes a meter of fabric to make that pouch and that meter of fabric divided by how much you buy your fabric for costs you $3, then that's how much you would use for the material cost for, for, your, for your fabric. So in that sense, then go ahead and make your list and then when you're ready, jump on to the next part of this where I'll walk you through the spreadsheet and how to fill it out. Okay, so here we are. Honestly, this is so quick and easy. You're going to love this tool. All you have to do is input information because everything will calculate for you. So basically for a pricing spreadsheet, there are three major areas. This is your materials list section. This is your yearly operating expenses section. And here is where a lot of the calculations will happen for you. Now I've made it really simple. Everything marked in yellow, you can type over this area and this area. And you can also type over this area, the forecast unit sales. Everything else don't type over because I've put formulas in here that will calculate important information for you. So we'll start from the top, materials list. Let's go back to our example of our fabric pouch that we mentioned. So for example, say the fabric for a fabric pouch that you plan to sell costs $3 per unit. Type that information in and then say it has some beads on it. Maybe those beads cost you $5. They're like imported amazing beads. <laughs> it's kind of expensive. Label, maybe your label is leather. You have a bunch of labels on it, it's $5. Maybe your thread is a buck. You have a wash tag and your wash instruction tag is like 50 cents. Uh, your hang tag may be broken down, it's like 50 cents. And then your zipper, it costs you a dollar. Maybe you buy it in a pack of three for $3 and it only costs you a dollar. So as you can see here, the total materials are $16 for this one pouch. And say you plan on selling it at a local craft show. And at the craft show, it's gonna cost you $100 per table. And then at the craft show, you plan on making, you don't have to pay for electricity at the show. We'll just do that example. And for example, say your unit sales, you plan to sell like 15 of these pouches there. So here your expenses will be $100 divided by how many sales you plan to do at that show. So your operating expenses would be like $6.67 per unit, so per pouch. So once you look over here, the total materials are $16. So this number will automatically go here your operating expenses, this number will automatically go over here. And you're right now looking at a total material plus expenses amount of $22.67, but you haven't paid yourself yet, or you haven't paid anyone to help you. So say your labor is $20. We're not gonna discuss distributor markup yet because that comes along maybe when you decide to go wholesale. So your total materials plus expenses look like you're spending about $42.67 to make this beautiful pouch. And um, so $42.67 is your cost of, of goods to make it. And so if you scroll down, these are the approximate prices based on your materials plus expenses of how much you should approximately be charging. Because really, this is just above your wholesale price of how much it costs to make. Now, when you're doing a craft show, 
Often new crafters will charge the equivalent of just above wholesale pricing um, because you know they're just getting started so maybe they'll charge like $50 around the $50 mark for this beautiful pouch. Um, maybe they uh, are thinking of doing wholesale and they already have wholesalers so really wholesale once you go into retail boutiques and stores they expect to be able to charge at least twice the price that they're buying it from you for. So in that case, you would have to sell it for the same amount or else you're going to upset them because they want everybody to be selling it at the same price. So it's about $85 if you're going to be selling it at a, at a retail consumer show. So now here is the range. So uh, you can base your pricing on 35% off the boutique price. See, so you're making a little bit of money off of uh, uh, it's more than wholesale what you're selling it for at, the, at this lower end of the range or you could be selling at a full to retail price at shows. Now sometimes at these craft shows they're charging people entrance to get into the craft show so if you know that they're charging people entrance already then it would make sense that maybe you charge a little at least a little bit less than what your retailers are charging because maybe they're paying ten dollars at the door just to get in so you can give them a bit of a price break and often your boutiques would understand that at least. Now, I put this here, big retailer distributors, big retailers, once you get into like hundreds and selling hundreds and hundreds of them, they're going to expect that they are able to charge at least 2.2% 2.2 of what you're selling at wholesale your product to them for. So retail distributors are expecting to at least price it this much because eventually they're going to have sales and they're going to start discounting. Now, this might this is a whole different t topic but uh, this might drive away your boutiques because they know that big retailers boutiques know that big retailers can discount more but uh, anyway to just to get started i would forget about big retailers just focus on what a re your t retail price is and you know your craft show price so if you need to watch this over again and start from scratch then just clear out it, these these amounts and just play around with the numbers if you have any questions feel free to let me know i'll do one more example i'm going to clear all these numbers out and i'm going to do an, one more example for say making a crochet teddy bear so for example your fabric or your material yarn costs about three dollars and then maybe your little bear has eyes so maybe you are paying $2 for the set of eyes. So this is maybe yarn instead. And then they, the thing has eyes. And then it needs a label, like a wash label. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of thread to sew, sew on the eyes and some of the parts and maybe it has a costume on. Then you need a wash instruction and it costs you 50 cents and a hang tag. And then maybe there's like stuffing and that costs you maybe a dollar. So now this little crochet thing is going to cost you nine dollars and uh, this one you're going to sell at a huge arts fair and it's going to cost you two hundred dollars to enter into this show there's a hundred dollars for electricity you also need show insurance for this craft show uh, you need a truck to rent to bring your tables and all your props in and then maybe you also have a bookkeeper and because you're you're doing a lot of these shows so you have to keep track of your money and your forecasted sales for the entire year you're planning on selling like 100 to 120 of these little bears then the operating expense per unit was probably more like five dollars and 25 cents so again the total materials per unit will go over here the operating expenses will automatically go here and now you're going to input your labor how much is it costing you to make each of these things now maybe you have someone helping you and you pay that person fifteen dollars because it takes them about an hour or so to make and uh, so now your price for making these little crochet bears is 29.25 so let's see what that brings us for our prices so basically uh times two you'd want to sell your little bear for at a retail price of $58.50 if you're going to match what your boutiques are selling it at. And, or if you're just like getting started or you wanna, you wanna offer people a discount on the first day and it's a door crasher, 35% off the retail price, maybe you only sell it for $38. But anyway, your range is somewhere between $38 and $58 if you want to price your product. If a huge store like Saks Fifth Avenue comes along and they want to sell your cute little luxury bears, um, then they're probably going to want to sell it at $64, $65 each. So anyhow, 
this is a fun little tool. Play around with the numbers. Maybe you get better breaks on like the eyes. Maybe it only costs you 50 cents or your thread it only really costs you 20 cents. Then you can see how that affects your overall prices. Or maybe you don't have a bookkeeper. Maybe you are already a bookkeeper. You're amazing at keeping your books and then you bring your overall costs down. So anyway, keep that in mind and also keep in mind that this labor price either pays you or it pays somebody that you've hired to help you make the product. So that was a lot of information, but it's way better than kind of making mistakes in terms of pricing too low or losing sales because it's priced too high. At least you can kind of have a range, have a jumping off point for where to start pricing your product and then get on out there and start your handmade business. So good luck to you. Please let me know if this was helpful. Leave a comment below if it was or wasn't helpful. Thumbs up or thumbs down. And don't forget to subscribe. And please remember to leave any questions or comments so then I can know if I'm providing any value to you and what I can produce for you in the future for content. So thank you very much and have a great day, everyone. Bye.